People now, they're like, yo, what can't you do? I'm like, I don't, I'm gonna just do whatever. I'm gonna wake up one day, I'm gonna just do whatever. Cause once you get past that first hurdle, like, okay, now I'm kind of creating a checklist. Like, what do I want to do next? What do I want to tackle next? So it's, it's a good feeling. Let's just take it back. Um, you grew up in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yes. Yeah. How did um, New Jersey mold and shape Karen? Um, oh man, growing up in Elizabeth definitely uh, taught me to have thick skin um, and realizing how I word things because they labeled me and how I also label things because being a resident there and going through elementary and high school, I was labeled weird, different, when actually I was unique. So... It was it was very interesting few years, but at the end of the day, it helped mold me, shape me, and yeah, I, I wish I could say nicer things, but that's pretty much it. It's just it taught me to have thicker skin. When you say thick thick skin, um, is that due to race? Is that due to gender? Is that? I mean, you got you got to think about it. My name is Karen Civil. Um, I am a Haitian American person who grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. So black people didn't identify with me because they didn't feel like I was one of them. And then Haitian people didn't identify with me because my name was Karen Civil. And at the time they grouped all um, um, people who were from islands or whatever, wherever you were from, that's the class you sat in all day. So I wasn't an ESL. You know, me and my brother were very advanced. We were in regular classes going to gifted and talented. So we didn't have those quote unquote issues. So we didn't fit in anywhere. So um, it was a situation where it was, I stopped going, why don't people like me? Why don't people accept me? I had to accept myself, had to understand like, Karen, you're always gonna be different. You know, you can either accept it, you can embrace it, or you can walk through life with this woe is me trying to fit in and conform into this place that's not for you. And it took me watching Cinderella to have this notion of, of like her sisters trying to put their foot into the shoe, into the glass slipper. And it's like, yo, this is not for you to, this isn't for you. So I had to remember like these ideas and these things, these thoughts that people had for what my life is, what, who I should be. Like it's the same thing, like Karen, you don't fit into this mold and that's okay. So I, you know, Certain people can look at it like it's a negative thing, but I looked at it as a positive thing. Like, thank you very much for teaching me very young that I do not belong, that I do not fit in. And it goes back to the labels of you called me different. I thought I was eccentric. You called me weird. I thought I was unique. So it's taking a negative label and switching it to a positive. You started um, developing science mm -hmm. in college, correct? No, younger than. Tell me a bit about that. Um, you know, when you, when you grow up in an urban environment, you're supposed to listen to hip hop and everything else. And I didn't at the time. It's just, I liked Immature. I liked the Backstreet Boys. I just had a different love of music. So now here I am online with people who have things in common with me. So the first thing for me was to create, um, well, I created a site for JD Williams, who was like, he's an actor. And I was like, so, so in love with him. I was like, oh, we're about to get married. He's from North New Jersey, like right there. This would be perfect. I can just talk about all the stuff because he didn't have a site. Um, so I created a, a Yahoo group for him. And then, then I found the Backstreet Boys. My brother came home one day with a Teen People magazine for me. And was like, huh. I was like, who's this? He was like, you should check them out. And then from there, I'll Never Break Your Heart was just all of a sudden after I got that magazine, I'll Never Break Your Heart was always coming on the radio. So then I just became the biggest Backstreet Boy fan. I wanted to know more information about them. And as I learned more information, I was like, hey, maybe there's somebody out there in the world who's like me who wants to know more info. So I created a site for them. And I think, I, I don't even think, I know that was the best thing I could have done because it opened up my mind to just meeting people who are just so different from me and having that conversation and seeing this is bringing us together. And then getting to meet them off of the site just let me know like the internet can give me what I want so it's just continuing to work towards it when people didn't see it so yep 1997 was a great year for me <laughs> most people 
in those situations which you can now mm -hmm. look back and say, okay, I relabel myself. But most people um, in those situations where they are misunderstood or mm -hmm. they're finding their path, they don't really know how to how to get through it. What, what was what was driving you? What was your inspiration during that, that period? Oh, I have an incredible mom. You know, I'm not going to pretend that I was just, I super got it very early on. I went through the phases of trying to fit in at times. And she always reminded me, like, why are you, like, sometimes I'd be like, hey, mom, can you get me these sneakers or can you get me these Jordans? She'd be like, why do you want it? It's not, I'm not going to buy it for you. She'd be like, why do you want it? And if the answer didn't satisfy her, that's what her, her response would be or that would be the yes or no that would break it. So if it wasn't like, oh, because I really want them, I'm gonna look cool in them. If I said, because everybody else has them and it's gonna make me cool, she'd say no. So, and I wasn't a good liar. <laughs> so she would know off the bat, like you're lying. Um, so for me, it was my mom because she wasn't, she wasn't pushing this, oh, I want you to be this way. I want you to be like this and X, Y, Z. She did it for a very long time and she realized I wasn't happy. So she was like, you know what? I'm gonna just let her go. Cause I rather her be happy in my home and I have a better understanding of her than to change her to something she's not. She's not talking to me, she's quiet, she's being antisocial and everything else. So she didn't want me to, sh she didn't want me to, sh she didn't want me to like shut her out. So that was her biggest thing and, and that really helped me. It's just the strength, the strength of my mother. You know, my father obviously was in the picture but he didn't really know what was going on. So he was working very hard and not really paying attention and certain things. So it's just my mother's love got me through it, honestly. Um, New Jersey isn't exactly New York. It's still its own. Mm -hmm. But you found yourself kind of um, transitioning to getting involved in what's happening in New York. From mm -hmm. what I understand, Hot 97 as yeah. an intern. Tell me a bit about that transition from like... New York is a, a, a different type of beast. In New Jersey, I wasn't doing anything entertainment related. I wasn't going out, I wasn't going to the clubs, I wasn't hanging out. I was just, I just lived in Elizabeth, New Jersey. That was it. But New York is where I worked, where I thrived, where ideas came, and I just felt like I belong. Even though it was a 21 minute ride on the New Jersey Transit, it was just a whole different mind state when you got to New York. And that's really what mattered to me and that's what drove me and pushed me and, and just even my first time by myself riding the train was going to apply for that internship with, with Angie Martinez. How was that internship? Um, it was an incredible experience to even try out for it because it went from like 100 to 30 to 10, down to five, down to the top three. I didn't make it, but then I got to intern for Flex, so that was really cool. Um, but it was definitely interesting. She, she got me to, 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 you know, think outside of myself, to see bigger and to want more. And I already thought, like, I was at this place, like, no, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And she was like, well, cool, you're doing good. I want you to do great. And even though she didn't pick me, I remember a couple months later, she saw me in the hallway and she was like, you know what? I should have picked you. And I was like, what? It was just so exciting. She also mentions me in her book. No big deal, though. But... You know, um, that was exciting within itself and just to have a relationship with her now and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a learning experience and it was one of my first to really catapult me and get me into the door, but I wouldn't have changed it for nothing because I was sitting at home listening to the radio like I normally do. And she was like, oh, enter this contest. And I remember my friend called and she was like, uh, what are you about to do? I was like, let me call you back because I'm about to go on the internet. This one you had to do dial up. It's not what we have now. And I was like, I'm about to go on the internet. She was like, why? I was like, I'm about to enter this contest. She was like, why? You're not going to win. I could have said, yeah, you're right, and sat on the phone and just had regular convo like we normally do. But I was like, nah, I'm going to call you back. So then I did the whole thing, sent an email, and literally like 15 minutes after I sent the email, I like got off the computer because I said to myself, I was like, after I sent it, I was like, she may call me, so let me free up the line. <laughs> and anybody who called, I was like, yo, let me call you back. My mom will call you back. I turned off all the ringers in the house because I did not want anyone. I did not want anyone on the phone. And then, lo and behold, I get a call. I look at the the call ID. It said MS Communications, and it was her intern at the time who won the year prior. Um, Mike calling. He was like, Angie wants you to come up to the station, and I'm like, and it went from there. The career path that I'm in, I know I'm gonna have to take a lot of bullets for certain things. 
So it's just, I'm not letting it fuck up the armor. I'm not letting it stop me from where I need to go. And it's just a part of the process.